Hello. My name is Ka. When I joined academia 10 years ago, I learned two new words. Procrastination and cramming. Procrastinate is to keep delaying something that must be done, often because it is unpleasant or boring. Well, that sounds familiar and human. I have also read articles that praise procrastination, because it helps to get all earlier procrastinated things done. Cramming, the art of studying intensively over a short period of time just before an examination, on the other hand is despised by everyone. Students that do it and educators who think it is not the right way to learn. Let me be the first one to present the lighter sides of cramming. Cramming, the new pedagogy. I stand by the window and look at life outside. That is what my lecturer in quantum electrodynamics did 30 years ago as well. I remember him chanting to himself boring, boring, boring. I understand him now. Perthor Valdson physicist with 15 credits pedagogy. Department of Electrical Engineering. Behind me sits a few hopefuls and solved problems in signal processing. The rest of the class sends me clear messages by either being physically or spiritually absent. They apply the new pedagogy skipper's grab. Skipper's grab is the Norwegian word for cramming. Well, skipper's grab has probably always been de facto learning method for everyone but denied by educators. There is no research on learning using skipper's grab and in the educational literature the skipper's grab is synonymous with memorizing and other unlikable things that should be combated with all measures. For a young and aspiring undogmatic educator, research on skipper's grab should be able to create a brilliant career. Skipper's grab is a sudden short-lived power grab. The etymological significance comes from the sailing ship era when one had little to do most of the time except when laying ashore and everyone had to take a grab, the skipper included. The skipper's grab has proud traditions and especially among those who have had the ability to think quickly and alone. Galileo Galilei discovered Jupiter's moons one evening in January, 1610 and thus cemented the Copernican worldview. Newton's Principia was conceived some intense autumn evenings to get ahead of Hooke and Leibniz. Einstein spent a couple of months on the theory of special relativity. Heisenberg found his uncertainty principle during a few hefty nights on his love trip to Helgoland after his mistress had fallen asleep. Nietzsche laid the foundation for his philosophy during a few walks. Mozart took the skipper's grab every time he was broke and conjured up the most beautiful operas and symphonies. Ludwig Holberg, the founder and most important contributor to Norwegian pedagogy, had his raptuses. The Norwegian constitution of 1814 was created in a short time with heavy drinking. The human intellectual development is the story of skipper's grab. It may seem that it was only the educational social constructive lighthouses Dewey, Piazza and Vygotsky who needed a long time to learn and then with the help of others. Knowledge production and learning strategies must reflect the needs of society and the business community. In a dynamic world with short deadlines and where changes happen quickly, skipper's grab is modus operandi and the only sensible method. We must adapt to a rapid change in the labor market. Yesterday's knowledge is useless in tomorrow's society. Instead of just-in-case knowledge, one must focus on just-in-time learning. Just as important as the ability to acquire knowledge quickly is to forget. Latent old knowledge must not take the place of new knowledge. Learning leads to an overloaded brain. Deep and slow learning is a meaningless time thief who steals focus from here and now. Recent research in mindfulness shows that thinking too much and long is neither healthy nor productive. In addition, too much knowledge prevents creativity by knowing too much. No, it's important to be the best when it really matters. No need to perform when no one is assessing. 
Just like in sport, it is all about topping the shape. Students and pupils should learn to learn, fast. Rapid knowledge assimilation is positive and should be acclaimed and saluted. The new Norway should not be built by slow and dim. Classical exams are the best way to measure students and students' rapid performance. And should the pass rate be too low, a committee can be established so that the exams again adapt to the skipper's grab. In such a reality, it becomes pointless to push normative, not the way things are, but how they should be, reality distant and outdated pedagogy on students and pupils. The ancient pedagogy with Piazza and Vygotsky in the lead, leads a meaningless struggle against nature and the human instincts. Even Darwin used skipper's grab to acquire knowledge. The old pedagogy seems to be based on Protestant work ethic, with sweat face you should eat your bread, while the natural is the path of least effort when it comes to tasks and challenges. Why do educators dislike skipper's grab? They stigmatize rational learning behaviors that are results and goal-oriented. Students take responsibility for their own learning by not waste their time on lectures. They use problem-based learning. The problem is the exam. They interact socially constructively with a teacher the day before the exam. Due is learning by doing is performed by attending the exam. Many aha experiences are triggered by hard work under pressure and many a student has experienced going through all the PSA stages with great learning pressure during the exam. After the exam, students exchange experiences in Vygotsky manner before concentrating on themselves again. The secret police can do the folder assessment. In any case, one can do without subject didactics since the students are never present anyway. Norway has lousy PISA results. According to former Minister of Education and Research Torbjörn Eisaksen, it is about a significant number of Norwegian pupils underperform in mathematics. It's about a quarter, almost a fifth. The solution, of course is a collective national PISA skipper's grab to be the best in test. A broad focus on skipper's grab will change the entire teaching sector. Most learning institutions can be shut down and the state and municipality can save large sums. Students and pupils are only required to be coached with timely ICT solutions or crash courses as a learning arena, in the days before the exam. Of course. It all can be outsourced. All schools and universities can be rented out for business activities. Teachers can be set to socially useful and productive work instead of speaking for deaf ears in empty lecture halls. With total absence, students can earn a living at the local supermarket and the like, and secure full student funding and thus cheap food. The state's education loan fund can thus be discontinued. In anticipation of serious educational research on Skipper's Grab, our department has conducted a large-scale survey regarding the prevalence of Skipper's Grab as study method. The response rate was a North Korean leadership election worthy, and the answer was a resounding yes to Skipper's Grab as a method of learning. When the students were asked why they used Skipper's Grab when the educators believe that it is a useless form of learning, the answer was, we go to school to get good grades. Good grades give us a well-paid job. Knowledge we can gain later. QED overwhelmed by such insights, the only rational response is to give in.